On this week's episode of Fishing 411, executive producer Mark Romanak travels south to Astor, Florida to sample some southern fried crappie fishing. Mark teams up with longtime friend of the show, Dale Voice, to explore the art of pulling jigs. Jig pulling is not only one of the most productive ways to cover water and catch southern crappie, it's also a great excuse to spend a day in Florida's winter sunshine. If you like slab crappie, you're going to love this action-packed adventure. So Dale, these fish are just scattered all over the place? They're not relating to any particular cover or structure? There's virtually no structure. There's a, it's, it's almost like a shallow dish here. The water running four to six feet all throughout the lake and the fish are everywhere. There seems to be little pockets of them. There's something that holds them in certain areas because every once in a while they'll go through an area and boom, sometimes you'll get four fish on at once. And uh, then you'll troll for another 15, 20 minutes with nothing, and then bang, bang, bang again. I don't know what draws them to particular parts of the lake, but they're everywhere. Well, this is kind of relaxing. I'm, a, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Very relaxing. Dale, I think we are hooked up here, my friend. Fish on is right. Here we go. Ooh, looky there. What do we have on today? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we're fishing with my lifelong friend, Dale Voice today, uh, near his winter home in Florida. And this looks like maybe it's a pretty decent fish here, Dale. I don't know, I mean, you're the, you're the judge of that, but I can, he just swirled back there and he looked, looked pretty decent. So, looks like I might have another line here tangled up. But, uh, That's pretty common. I'm gonna swing him in here and take a peek at him. All right, the object of our affections, huh? Not a giant, but definitely one for the uh, for the frying pan. Excellent. All right, Black good start. Crappie. Let's get that puppy out of there. Paper mouse. They are indeed paper mouse. So, now that's a start. Yeah, that is a start. God, they're beautiful fish, and they're not that far off from spawning here, right? They uh, they spawn here. What they're, what's, we consider winter is winter. <laughs> starting to get spring in Florida, so very cool. All right, well, the object is to keep a few for the table, right? Definitely, we need to eat a few. All right, well, we're going to do that, so. There's fish, outside Ooh, rod. That's, that looks like a good one. I assume when the rod, rod doubles over, that's a good thing, huh, Dale? <laughs> Whoa. You got double you on know what, I don't, that. Oh, you got, maybe that's in the other line. Oh, man, that yeah. is impressive. I wonder if that's a crappie. I don't know, it's hard to say here. I'm not going to. I'm not the expert on this, but what I can tell you is that this fish is pulling pretty good. This one's going to come right up the back here, I think, Dale, so I don't think we'll get too much problems with the other lines. Good. Well, I shouldn't say that. Now he's over in your lines. <laughs> no, I think it is a crappie. I just see him on the surface. Just a good fish, so. And these light action rods like this are actually kind of fun. He can have as many lines as he wants. <laughs> He's got a few. <laughs> How many lines does it take to catch a crappie? 
Well, I guess I understand. It takes as many as it takes. <laughs> nice so. job, Mark. Look at that. Oh, well, now there's, we're talking. there's a Florida crappie. Now we're talking. <laughs> For a Michigan boy, that's a, that's a dandy crappie by Michigan standards. I, think, I know you just that's an everyday deal here in Florida for you, but that is an awesome crappie right there. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you. Uh, well, I guess this one will go in the live well, and uh, we might have a fish fry here before too long. Can we use the term finger licking good? Finger licking good. I'll go for that. I love that. Very, very good. I'm running my lines directly off the back and using that high vis line, you can see the lines pretty pretty well. And I try to steer around them and I try to keep the rod tip down and keep the fish down in the water. These crappie are so soft mouthed and when they start coming up on the surface and flopping around, that's oftentimes when you lose them. Most of the time, it's when I get them right to the back of the boat and I turn around to grab the net because I'm alone and I'm reaching for them and you're pulling and <laughs> boop. There's nothing more frustrated when you get a two pounder on and you just watch him swim away. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Let's flesh this out for a second. What we're doing is essentially called a presentation called long lining. We're taking very light jigs, 132nd ounce, we're fishing them on light line, six pound test monofilament, and we're dragging them straight behind the back of the boat. So we're using a variety of different rods, a seven foot, a nine foot, and an 11 foot rod to stagger them a little bit so we're not putting all of our jigs in exactly the same place. So we can have very minimal amount of tangling, but that's the reason why the high vis line is kind of important. The line itself is the fish are not gonna be spooked by it, but the ability for us to see the line makes it easier for us to be able to, when we're fighting a fish, to try to avoid tangling another line that might be nearby. So a high vis line really helps in that regard. At the terminal end, we got about five foot of clear fluorocarbon line, and basically that's what our jig is tied to. So there's really no worry about the fish actually seeing the line. Um, the high vis line is for us to see, not for the fish to see. Well, that's a much better fish deal, much better fish. He's not a giant though, but in fact, I got him up on the surface. You keep him right where you got him and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. How many lines I can get across? I think I got over here, Mark. How do you get way back there? I don't know, but that's not too bad. We'll, uh, we'll make do with that. We'll make do with that. I'm gonna scoop him though. I think he's, a, I think he's one, one we wanna scoop. He's got a pretty good sized mouth on him. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Oh, I just got to figure out how to do this around these other. Uh, <laughs> Here, I'll, I can hold the back of the net for you, maybe. All right, we got ourselves a nice Florida crappie. <laughs> That's what we came for. Yeah. <laughs> You are, uh, you know, from my perspective, I mean, you're the, you're the guy that really loves panfish more than anybody else I think I've ever met. I, I, <laughs> the smile on your face pretty much says it all. You're pretty darn happy here in Florida for the winter, aren't you? I'm happy. <laughs> now, if you were back home in Michigan, you'd be ice fishing, and I don't think you'd be quite as comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful fish, man. Isn't that Beautiful nice? Fish. Look, at that. Look at the colors on these things. Yeah. They're yeah. just gorgeous. They are gorgeous, no doubt about it. So, And they taste good, too. Oh, oh well, we're going to find out. We're going we're gonna to have to find out. This week's episode was shot on the St. John's River system, and that's in north central Florida. And while it's a river system, there's some wider spots in the river that are actually like small, shallow lakes, and that's where we caught the majority of our fish. The St. John's River system is great crappie fishing, but it also is home to manatees. And the problem with manatees is that they end up with special regulations wherever they're manatees. For example, no wake zones. Um, a propped boat running at high speed could do great damage to manatees. So a lot of this area is a no wake only fishing. Dale, I got a question for you. We're pretty much going about one one, you know, right around one mile an hour, and we're running a one thirty second out jig. And I can see that there's probably times when you're gonna play with your speeds and maybe your jigs a little bit, I'm curious how you manage that. We're dealing with water that's about four to six foot deep, so we're only trying to vary our depth maybe a foot or two at times. So a 30 second ounce jig seems to be ideal most of the time, but sometimes the wind will pick up. We gotta pick up our speed just to be able to control the boat. In order to do that, I'll go to a 16th ounce jig. The 16th ounce also lets me run a little faster, and if I'm having trouble finding fish, I can cover a little more water. So 16th to a 32nd, it's about ideal. I've tried a little heavier. You get to an eighth, and four to six feet of water, pretty soon you're dragging bottom. 
If you're looking for a crappie jig for this long line fishing technique, I highly suggest you take a look at a new Eagle Claw jig out there. It's in the Laser Sharp series. And the beauty of it is it's got a nice thin wire hook. It's kind of a wide bend hook, so it's perfect for fishing with plastic. And of course, in the Laser Sharp series, they are literally super, super sharp. So you don't have to worry about sticking these fish. They're going to stay stuck. And uh, you're going to find them in the 1 32nd, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 quarter, and even 3 8 ounce sizes. So if you're a jig guy, check out these new jigs. I think you'll find they are absolutely dynamite for crappie and other species. Yeah, those are, I believe that's an 11 foot rod you got in your hand. So it's just a, you know, from a panfish perspective, it don't get much better than that. It's just a, an ideal fight. You see how many lines I've got. You're doing good right now. It looks like maybe we're in between. You're doing really good right now. He's... I'm going to scoot down underneath here and uh, look right. at that bright fluorescent line. You can see the, the leader comes. coming. Looked like he got maybe just one line there. That's not All bad. Right. Well, I think we found the right color combination. That seems to be hot right now. Yeah, there's no question about that. I'm going to pull that out of the way. Um, classic color. Yep. I mean, very contrasting. This water I would describe as the color of coffee. So there's a pretty good stain to this water. Um, I'm thinking we probably need to get more of those because we have two of those in the water and that's the only color that's getting it's bit. It's the only right color now. getting bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we got to switch some more out. That chartreuse color, I think, really makes a difference in that stained water, as you said. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Eagle Claw offers a bunch of different styles of jigs, and let me tell you something, a leadhead jig has probably caught more walleyes than any other presentation out there, but not all jigs are created equally. The reason why there's so many different styles of jigs out there is for the application you're going to use that jig for. Now let me tell you what I'm talking about. This first jig that I'm going to pull up is called a boxing glove jig, and this jig right here has a trocar hook on it, a great super sharp hook, um, but what it has is a 60 degree eye tie, and so when I look at this style of jig, to me that tells me it's a swim bait jig or it's a casting style jig. Whether you're pitching jigs in rocks or weeds, that 60 degree eye tie is perfect for that. Uh, you seem to have a better hookup percentage and you also seem to get snagged a lot less with that 60 degree eye tie. So this boxing glove jig right here is pretty much ideal for a casting application. Now if you're going to be vertical fishing, whether it's vertical jigging or maybe fishing a jig under a float, you're going to want to look for a 90 degree eye tie. This is an eagle eye jig right here. And this jig has that 90 degree eye tie I was talking about. The nice thing is you can see that eye tie come straight up. This is a jig that I would fish in a vertical type presentation. The really nice thing that about this eagle eye jig is it has a Pro V hook on it. And what that means is it has a little bit thinner wire hook and it also has a wider gap, which really helps accommodate plastics. The other nice thing about this jig that's right here is that little tiny plastic keeper that's right there that really helps keep the plastics on as you're fishing throughout the day. So both of these jigs, whether it's this eagle eye jig that I have in my hand or the boxing glove jig are both great jigs. It just depends on the type of application you're going to use it for. Now remember, 60 degree eye tie, casting application, 90 degree eye tie, vertical presentation. If you take that out into the water with you this year, I think you're going to be a lot more successful fishing jigs. Dale, I think this one is definitely going to be a netter. All right. And um, very, very nice fish here. Haven't seen him yet, but uh, um, he's staying down real good, and that is always a good indication. Man, we're having a blast in. This is so much fun. <laughs> Dale, I can clearly see why you enjoy this. What a beautiful fish. Oh, man. And these light action, ultra light rods. Fun, 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 fun. Oh, that this looks like a good fish. This is definitely a good fish. I don't have this all the way extended, so you got to bring him to me. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see. Let me see, Looky Mr. Black Crappie. That is a beautiful fish. <laughs> Man, that is Isn't so much fun. Pretty? That is gorgeous. I wish we had this kind of fishing back home in the wintertime. Unfortunately, it'd be a little tough to do this on the ice. 
If you're a troller, you're probably wondering how deep these jigs go, and believe it or not, the technology exists to tell us exactly that. The Precision Trolling Data app actually covers jig trolling, and there's a variety of jigs that are listed in there. The crappie size jigs, the 132nd and the 116th ounce jigs are included in that app. You can also go up to some larger jig sizes if you want to troll deeper water for other species, like maybe walleye or something of that nature. So you've got 132nd, you got 116th, you got 18th, you got 1 quarter, and even 3 8 ounce jigs. So if you want to pull jigs and you're curious how deep they go, the Precision Trolling app will tell you exactly how deep they go. Ooh, that's pulling some drag out. That's pulling some drag out. That seems impressive. I'm gonna get a net. All right. Maybe the crappie like the cooler weather too. Holy smokes. I like it. This is absolutely gorgeous. This one feels good. Got a fish on that. Oh. Now you might have just bumped it with the. I just uh, bumped it. I got. Yeah, when that fish came across. I got that line. Oh, I we'll got a couple that's lines. That's all right. Here. We'll concentrate on getting the fish, and then we'll worry about how many lines we got. That is a nice. That is a nice crappy deal. Exactly what we're hoping to catch right there. All right. That's what we're looking for. So most of that popped right off there. So he's. Good. That's all we got. Is just him. If that's all we got. We've done really good. You. Uh, you've done very well, sir. Not a giant slab, but a very nice Florida crappie for sure. Probably in that 12 inch range. You know, crappie are panfish, but the fact of the matter is they're actually a predator species. They spend most of their time targeting minnows. That's what they're feeding on. So if you want to attack crappie fishing and be as effective as possible, you want to use lures that actually not just look good, but also smell good. So a lot of guys will use scent on their lures uh, to enhance that ability to catch fish. So what I would recommend if you're going to do that is use something that's natural, sort of match the hatch, so to speak, or use a scent product that is going to smell very much like what a crappie is used to smelling in its natural environment. So a couple of options you might want to look at, um, we use a lot of Procure on Fishing 401, and this particular formula is called Super Gel. Now this stuff is super Super sticky, super greasy, and so we put this on lures like twister tails or soft plastics or crankbaits or other hard body baits. But some of the stuff that you might fish for crappies, this is not going to be suitable. Say for example you're using a hair jig or maybe a marabou style jig or anything that's got a hackle or a pulsating type hackle to it. If you put super gel on it, what's going to happen is you're going to gum it up and you're going to lose that natural undulation in the water. In that case, you're going to need something a little bit different and that's where this rooster tail scent comes out. This is a water soluble oil. So when you spray this on there, you're getting a scent stream, but you don't gum up your hackles. So your hackle is going to pulsate in the water naturally. This is a product that's made by also by Procure, but it's marketed through Yakima Bait. And of course, the super gels are marketed through Procure. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Diowa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait scents. Fish on. Oh, that feels good, Mark. I'm already on the net, Dale. I saw that rod fire. He's on the wrong side of the boat here, <laughs> but uh, that's all right. He's got a couple lines, but that's all right. We'll, we'll um, deal when with they're that. that. When they're that nice, we'll just take them and not worry about it. And uh, that's exactly what we're looking for, Dale. Oh, he just got off. Was that a bass? No, it was, was a that crappie. A crappie. Was it? It was a Man, big one crappie. one flop and he's gone. It was a big crappie. It was a dandy. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I didn't lose that fish. <laughs> I'd feel really bad if I let that fish get off on camera. <laughs> I think I got another one on. <laughs> Is it that big? Right here. You got another one on. We'll give you a chance big. to redeem yourself. We'll see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You must be living right today, Mr. Voice. <laughs> you must be living right. Get down there. Get down there. Oh, oh yeah. Don't let him jump. Don't let him jump. Don't do it. Man, he's feisty. He's staying down, boy. He's got to be good. Oh, Dale. Did, he, did I bump him off? No, not yet. Yeah, Are you trying, trying to, to? No, I'm trying to net a crappie like a walleye. <laughs> I gotta tell you though, that fish half the size of the one you let get oh, off at the back of the boat. half. <laughs> Don't I wish. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was, half, I, I, it was twice that big deal. I haven't caught any three pounders yet, Mark. <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't three. Maybe it was oh. like two nine or something. That is a dandy fish. Boy, that's pretty fish. Good job, Dale. That is what we're looking for right there. That is a pretty fish. 
You know, these crappie, uh, they, they don't call them paper mouth for, for nothing. Um, they tend to have a, a very thin film of, of membrane on both sides of their mouth, which will rip out very easily. So when you hook one of these bigger ones, you want a real nice and slow and easy. Opposite of what we would normally do, keep your rod tip up. I tend to want to put my rod tip down to keep this fish in the water so he doesn't come out. Because if they come up on the surface and stop, start flopping around, those big fish are, are more likely they're going to shake the hook, they're going to be gone. You know, in the United States, when people think fishing, often they're thinking about bass fishing. And clearly, there are more bass fishermen in the United States than any other style of fishermen. And then probably the other one that would pop up is something like walleye or salmon fishing. But believe it or not, there are more crappie fishermen in the United States than there are walleye fishermen and salmon fishermen put together. Crappie fishing is hugely popular, particularly in the south, but you can catch crappie in almost every state in the United States. Well, I will slip up and see if I can find the, uh, what I call the butterfly net. <laughs> well, I'm making fun of Dale's crappie net here. It's a, it's a, Perfect for crappie fishing. It wouldn't be too ideal for any other kind of fishing well, we do back pro home. Probably wouldn't work for those walleye, <laughs> I know. My ice fishing holes are bigger than this net is. <laughs> hey, but it works. It definitely is working. There's get no out, question about out, that. Oh, out. that is a good looking fish get right out. there. That's a good looking fish, Dale. Just keep him coming just like that. Just like that. Oh, don't oh. jump. Man, I tell you what, these crappies are studs, athletes. I got him. Right. I got him. Very nice deal. Well, as you can see, the sun is literally setting on our St. John River crappie fishing adventure. My name is Mark Romanak. You've been watching Fishing 401. I hope to see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Oh, Dale, that's embarrassing. <laughs> What's embarrassing? <laughs> that's embarrassing. Hey, that's, that's, oh, a, that's, that's, that's a heck of a way to treat a nice crap. Drop them on the floor, bang them, bang them around a little bit. That's a sign our fishery is healthy and that next.